So what does Hasbro CEO Chris Cox think about the missteps of 2023 and the future of Dungeons & Dragons going forward from 2024, its 50th anniversary? We're going to take a look at an article today where he discusses just that. But before we get into it, of course, folks, if you haven't already, please do click the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications about videos like this, our upcoming live streams and Let's Plays, our deep dives and everything in between. I appreciate it. It helps a lot. So let's go ahead and jump into this article now. This comes to us from WBUR, and this is actually a radio interview. We're not going to listen to it. We're going to read the article uh, and just kind of take a look at it. I will link to the article below. So if you want to listen or read, you go right ahead. And this comes to us from Scott Tong and James Perkins Mastro Marino. So let's take a look at this. Hasbro CEO on the future of Dungeons and Dragons after 50th anniversary. Fan favorite character Minsk and his miniature giant space hamster boo ride atop a dragon in this recent D&D adventure courtesy of Hasbro. Dungeons & Dragons turns 50 this year, and its owners plan to make games like it uh, the core of their business. If you look at Dungeons & Dragons, if you look at our board games, more people are playing these games than ever before, says Hasbro CEO Chris Cox. Our satisfaction rates, the happiness that player ha players have, are higher than ever. Of course, every owner of the D&D IP has said that after a new release came out. More people are playing now than ever before, even when... That was demonstrably not true, but we'll we'll continue on. The company can point to the digital adaptation, D&D adaptation, Baldur's Gate 3, as the brand's most recent success. The video game won top prize at the 2023 Game Awards and has sold well over 10 million copies. I personally think that is highly separable from pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons. I don't think the success of a video game necessarily says good things about the tabletop, nor vice versa, but let's continue on. Last year, Hasbro also weathered backlash over a leaked, then dropped, change to its fan licensing agreement and a disappointing box office for the acclaimed movie Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Then came layoffs just before Christmas. Hasbro slashed more than a thousand jobs mid-December, mostly from its alien toy brands, but positions at D&D and the ultra-popular card game Magic the Gathering also got the axe. And I think the article here is definitely underselling it. We talked about those very cuts when they happened, and it wasn't just a few people here and there. The article praises uh, Baldur's Gate 3, but... Hasbro slashed all the people at Wizards of the Coast responsible for interfacing with Larian on Baldur's Gate 3. Meanwhile, the company faces burgeoning competition. Uh, Titian. Critical Role, the media franchise that spawned from live D&D broadcasts, has started to produce rival tabletop gaming systems. Other online markets like Drive Through RPG feature dozens of alternative role-playing games, which often find champions in popular YouTubers. But despite pessimism from some fans on social media, Cox sees a sparkling future for D&D and Hasbro's gaming properties. I've been playing D&D since 1983, says Cox. I've been playing Magic the Gathering since 1995. We don't think about this just as a short-term sugar high. We think about this as stewards of the brands who come to it, not just as business people or designers, but as fans of these brands. And we want to pass the torch to new generations of fans, even brighter than we found it. I personally think that's an out and out lie but you know that's just my opinion hasbro's licensed mobile game monopoly go earned 2 billion after its 2023 release magic the gathering made record profits in recent years despite grumblings from longtime players hasbro also invested 1 billion dollars into video game projects which include upcoming science fiction epic exodus starring matthew mcconaughey We've got one of the best game portfolios in the world. I think when you talk to Hasbro CEO on our second 100th anniversary, 99 years from now, I think they'll be talking about how we're still in toys and we're still in games and how we're taking the next generation of exciting technologies or play patterns that we can be innovating on. That's certainly what we're trying to build for now, and I'm confident it will be built. we'll be building for it in the future as well. 
And so we get to the five question, questions for Chris Cox. I'm going to warn you guys, you, you, you'll you want to put on your raincoats and your heavy boots here because uh, those of you down in front, you're going to get splattered with a lot of corporate BS. Um, and so five questions for Chris Cox. Can you explain the mass layoffs of last year and why certain jobs were affected? We've been going through a turnaround for the last couple of years, particularly in our toy business, making these tough trade-offs around how we preserve our cost base, drive our growth, and think through where we want to go in the future of the company. They're always hard, especially when they affect people we work with who are our friends and colleagues and loyal to the company. We had to make tough decisions to let some people go at the end of the last year. That overwhelmingly affected our toy business and kind of like the corporate services that help support it. It did have a smaller impact on our games business, but that was for different reasons in, inside of toys. It really was driving this turnaround in, inside of games. It was more than just kind of changing priorities in a rapidly growing and developing business because games have been a business that's been growing for us for the last 15 years and represent a major future investment for us. And we think it's going to be a major grower for, <clears throat> major grower for us in the future. So my question to that, to you folks out there would be, if Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro's gaming is growing so well, then why did they slash a thousand jobs when Games Workshop gave all of their employees a 2,500 pound Christmas bonus? I guess it's not growing as well as you might say, Mr. Cox, but let's continue. What is it that's more challenging about the toy side that has you pivoting more to the game and digital sides? We've got great creative teams. Well, you had them. We've got some iconic brands that people literally have grown up with for the last hundred years. It's more of an industry thing. Games have been growing at mid to high single digits for the last decade. Toys have been growing more like a single digit basis for the last 10, 20 years. A lot of that has to do with birth rates and kind of like the changing nature of play. Increasingly, people are playing at older and older ages. They're also playing well into adulthood, but they're shifting to more games at earlier and earlier ages, both tabletop as well as digital games. What Chris is saying here without saying it is, we Gen Xers are still the ones who spend money and regardless of edition or whatever, we're still the ones that fondly remember Dungeons and Dragons and are willing to spend money on it. A number of fans said they were outraged when elite corporate document came out that would have taken some royalty money from individual creators who make content of their own for the game, say a new monster, a new world. Hasbro walked back the plan, but some fans are still unhappy with the direction the game is going. How do you make sure to win them back? This should be interesting. We take a very Big Ten approach to how we manage the brands and how we think about our fandom. At the end of the day, we do try to think about things not just around who's posting online or who's posting a video is associated with the brands, but also who's just playing them around the kitchen tables or in game stores around the world. In other words, what Chris is saying here is we bury our heads in the sand and the people who are the voices of the communities, we just say, oh, those are just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 people online who are complaining about us. Look, the people in the fields aren't complaining about us. Chris, the people out there just playing the games don't all have YouTube channels and Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts. They're relying on other people to get their feelings heard. I think social media is wonderful. It's a very powerful marketing vehicle for us, uh, unless somebody happens to get Magic the Gathering cards you don't want them to have, and then you send a private police force after them. It's a great way for us to connect with our fans and connect with influencers. You guys know how I feel about that. But you also have to take a really broad sampling of players' opinions. If you look at the net satisfaction or any kind of loyalty satisfaction ratings, they generally are up. We make mistakes. We've had products that haven't done well. We've made some decisions that we've had in some cases quickly walked back. And I think it's the strength of the game that as we're connected to our community, as we are, that we empower our teams to make decisions to be agile and to learn from them. 
D and D, it's one of the most open game licenses in the history of gaming. It's got a vibrant creator community that we value a great deal. We continue to work with these creators. We continue to work with those small publishers. We continue to work with those streamers that make the game as big as possible and as great of a hobby as well as living for people who can create uh, around it as we possibly can. And then they go on to talk about Magic the Gathering. Uh, it was Hasbro's first billion dollar brand and the company is seeking to steer it towards more casual players by printing and putting out more cards for more people to play. But Bank of America briefly downgraded the company's stock in response saying Hasbro was killing the golden goose flooding the market. Is that a potential trade-off here? I think it's also important to say a couple of months after Bank of America gave us that rating, they actually raised us back up to a buy. I think we... I think what we've done with Magic over the last five or six years is we've tripled the size of the game, we significantly expanded the overall player base, and we've done that by thinking expansively about who plays it or who could play it. Most video games, most uh, uh, kind of more hardcore strategy games, they've maybe 10 or 15% of their player base that identify as non-male. For Magic, it's like 35% of players identify as non-male. For Dungeons and Dragons, it's closer to 45%. You know, we're very proud of the diversity and focus on all players of different stripes who can play the game. Of course, as I have reiterated over and over, Dungeons and Dragons has always been diverse. So thanks for finally getting on board with us who've known this since at least the 1970s, Chris. We've tried very, very hard to figure out different modes to play it, making it more social and making it more casual in nature, while still offering a great depth of play for competitive and highly strategic players. And then we've also done a really good job of thinking about how we can make it more collectible. As a result, our hobby stores, who are the primary people who sell the game, there's about 10,000 of them around the world who sell it. They've never been more successful with that. And those are small and medium sized businesses who are doing 200,000 or 300,000 in business a year. And our larger vendors have also done really well. Like we've grown across the board and grown both players, grown both players as well as their engagement. And then the last one here is Hasbro has a video game coming out starring Matthew McConaughey after the Dungeons and Dragons movie did only OK. But is this where you're headed? Not so much Hollywood movies, but blockbuster games. I think it's all of the above. We continue to invest in entertainment. We have a pretty significant team there and have some great Hollywood movies and TV shows in development already produced. This seems to fly in the face of the fact that they're not producing a Dragonlance series. They've cut away all their video game ties and they've cut away their video game studio. But let's kind of go on. Transformers 1 will be a major uh, animated theatrical event later this year, looking at the origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron. Video games are obviously a huge form of entertainment. I think more and more they're dominating younger viewers and younger players' favorite brands. I think you see the success of video games with things like the Super Mario movie last year, or how games are starting to transcend and drive multi-generational play. So certainly we see that, and we're, see we're investing accordingly. We continue to invest invest behind entertainment, we can. We are investing more and more in digital, and then we've got our great kind of physical paced play portfolio of iconic games and toys. Well, I think what we have there, guys, is a lot of high-grade corporate gobbledygook. Um, <clears throat> I think he very deftly stepped over and around things like how upset they made their fan base with the the uh, OGL license. And I do have to say, with all respect to the WBR uh, folks who did this interview, it wasn't a temporary thing that they walked back. It is still in limbo, folks. OK, I was one of the first people to say we won when they walked it back. But all we've heard back from Hasbro Wizards at Coast about this is, well, we're considering maybe putting older additions into the uh, Creative Commons, which they haven't yet, if they're going to do that at all. So I would say just based on this, it sounds like more corporate doublespeak. But 
You be the judge, guys. You let me know what you think of this. I, of course, will link to the article down below. If you want to read it, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of this. Is this just more corporate BS? Does this sound like someone who's truly penitent and wants to reach out to fans? Um... I've got my opinions on it, and I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards no. But again, please tell me what you think, guys. Leave us a comment down below, and uh, we'll be back soon with another video, another live stream, some more wonderful Let's Plays and Deep Dives. And again, if you haven't already, please do click the subscribe button and click the bell icon for notifications, and we'll get back to you next time. Peace, and uh, don't let the corporate types cast confusion on you.